people angry with white people? Why are we angry with the white people in Africa? Colonialism, uh, imperialism, this and that, new colonialism. We were on our island called Africa. They were on their island called Europe. We all had wood timber. They made boats and they came. We could have also made boats and gone there. They made boats and they came. When they came, they asked for our cousins and brothers and relatives who were in the villages. And we said, oh, we can bring some. If you give me mirror, matches, oil, sugar, I'll give you three of my cousins. Do you think they came and they took the people just like that? They had the collaboration of, the, of our side. So when you read the story about Joseph and how Joseph was captured and was taken to Egypt, we always think that it is Joseph's brothers who were very wicked. Is that not the case? You don't think that those who bought him, the Bible doesn't even say who bought him, just some traders. They are just people who bought him. And nobody thinks that, oh, these people are bad. Why is it that when it comes to black people and white people, we are always blaming the white people who came to buy our cousins? Why don't we blame ourselves for selling our brothers and sisters? Any black person, Jason who is in Canada, is our relative. Maybe he's from Cape Coast or Jamestown, we don't know. How did black people reach that place? They were sold, they are relatives who are sold. So we have to now look at ourselves and take responsibility and say, we have done something wrong. Instead of saying, well, white people, imperialism, colonialism, disidentialism, and all forms of rebellion. We have to rise up and say it's our fault. And then work on, find out what it is that made us do that today. Maybe we are doing the same thing today. In another way, privatization, selling of this, doing various things, investments and so on, is the, maybe, maybe the same thing. The people are coming back and buying things from us at peanuts and we are selling out everything to them. Maybe, I don't know. So blame yourself. Brothers, if you are having a lot of thoughts in your mind, blame yourself. Work on yourself. Amen. Ladies, if you are noticing something there, brothers who are macho, this, that. Just work on yourself. You will not even notice. One lady told me that when she sees a, a, a brother walking, she just will say, and her mouth will be watering. Yes. Another lady said, when I see men, I, I feel like having sex with them. So the guy who was, I remember I saw this Larry King. He said that she feels like having sex all the time. She's married and her husband cannot keep up with her desires. So he allows her to have others. So Larry King asked her, so now do you feel like having sex? She said, yeah, I feel like it now. <laughs> Maybe with Larry King, I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's work on ourselves. Amen. Me, I believe. You see, because, I mean, really, you can't tell people not to dress. You can do some things. Don't try and do this, try and do this, try. But at a point after that, I mean, they are there. I mean, we are men and they are women. They are there. They are beautiful. That is how God has made them. Yeah, I mean, if somebody has got breasts, she has the breasts. I mean, what do you want to do about it? They are there. Even if she covers it, they are there. And I'll say that even for me, I hardly ever meet unbelievers. If you meet unbelievers, ladies or girls, there's something wrong even with you. Well, the only people I see are Christians. So I don't even know where, what they were. From my house to the church, from the church to my house. These are the places I go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us really work on ourselves and become pure. Hallelujah. Amen. Please. And let us become pure so that we would really be pure. We can always blame others. Oh, it's the girls. It's the boys. It is them. But it is you. It is because sin has entered into your mind. Why would you even think? What is, what is a naked? I know a brother and sister. Grown-ups. They were, I think, in Achimota school. Grown-ups are like this. Up to university level. The brother and the sister, they stay in the same room. They bath together. They eat together, they are naked together, and they're naked like bananas. Born again Christians, going to charismatic church. 
the brother doesn't feel anything about his sister. And the sister also doesn't feel anything. Grown up, beautiful, nice. Same father, same mother. Brother and sister. Why is it that your sister, you don't feel? <laughs> huh? Is she not a naked woman? Huh? Is she not a naked woman? So why? Or you have feelings towards your sisters? You shouldn't have feelings towards your sisters. See me after church if you have feelings towards them. Amen. And many people marry people who look like their sisters. Yes. Hmm. This is very interesting. The next one, the next law, I think it's last but one law of the shepherd. The hardness of a shepherd is directly proportional to the number of things he can accomplish. The hardness of a shepherd is directly proportional to the number of things he can accomplish for God. All right. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse number 3. Thou therefore, have you got it down? The hardness, hardness, hard. Hard. Ness of a shepherd is directly proportional to the number of things he can accomplish. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Quickly so that we can close. Let's read it. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ endure what? Hardness. 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 Some of you are too soft. Convenience is what you want. Easy way forward. Teach us more and let us go and rest. We didn't come here to play. You can't sit and stay awake. But if it comes to video and to play and to other things, you can stay awake. But if it comes to being in the presence of the Lord for a long time, you see a problem. Ten types of hardness. Number one, hardness in watching. Jesus said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. The harder you are, the harder you are what? The harder you are as a shepherd, the more things you can accomplish. Number one, hardness in watching. What is watching? Staying awake. Ability to stay awake. It takes hardness. And so come, when you were in the university, you, you were doing what course? How much do you sleep? Um, very little. Um, quite close to our final thesis. You realize that sometimes you sleep, I was sleeping a maximum of three hours sometimes. Oh, in fact, I could hardly distinguish between nighttime and daytime because you just wake till you drop sometimes. And in my situation, I was combining it with church activities. I didn't let it affect my flow in church. So if I go to church late, leave church late, it means I must take it as daytime when I come back. And so you just go. Great. Sam, Sam, sorry I come. What, what about you? Is it true what he said? Did you do the same course as he did? What happened was I realized that in a week I could count the days we were awake rather. <laughs> and we were, we, were, we were asleep because I realized that for maybe seven days of the week we were up about five days. And then we just sleep one or two days and then we continue the next week. So like four days, five days we were up. No sleep. No sleep. 
I have witnesses. My, my own reverend maiden is a witness. What I'll say is that um, maybe we can go to the classroom for, you can be there for about four days. Oh, it's true. <laughs> you, I mean, you won't back, you'll be there for four days. You'll be at the same time. What, 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 what course were you doing? What course were you doing? Architecture. Architecture. Four days you go to classroom. In El Mali, in El Mali. Oh, it's true. Four days. Very true, but what's the big daddy used to take coffee? I mean, raw coffee. Coffee from the sachet. What's the big daddy? Come. He used to do what? Chew coffee. He used to chew coffee and maybe cook, but chew coffee. What's the big daddy? What, you are, what, 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 what are you doing? Yes, um, it's, it's true. You go maybe on Monday, and what, what we normally do is, um, like we have a mattress there, just one mattress for about 10 or 15 people. So you just work, and when you are tired, you, you sleep maybe one. Have a mattress in your classroom. It's in Mecca. It's about 20 minutes from the hall, so you, you don't go to the hall. So about 30 minutes, you just rest, and somebody else wants to rest. So you have to get up and make it. And then you also have to go to Padre and pray. And go to town and to follow up. So you can't afford to. Hey! Hardness! That's hardness. If tomorrow they are architects, they are building houses, they have money, they are blessed, and look at them, they feel so good. They are coming with their cars. Eh? Because you are an architect, you feel good. Why? Why? <laughs> Why not? You know what he has suffered? The man is saying that for four days they don't sleep. And he chews coffee. I've never, since I became a Christian, I was born, I've never met anybody who chews coffee. <laughs> I had a friend, eh? my friend Stanley Joe, he we used to put coffee in a bottle. A big bottle and just coffee and water, brown, you think it's Coca-Cola, big bottle, no sugar. And then you go to some place to learn with the bottle. We drinking it, drinking it, drinking it, drinking it, learning hardness. Doctor No said I used to chew coffee, you know, I have no chew coffee. No. The harder you are, and they accomplished, they started the church in Kumasi when they were students. And the church was at Konfuanochi Hospital and they were in tech. Konfuanochi Hospital and tech are far. Today they are architects, they are pastors, and they are blessed. The harder you are, the more you can accomplish. Tell me somebody, say, the harder you are, the more you can accomplish. <laughs> so you see, we are here. We are staying awake. Hardness is making, otherwise, you know what? We could have. In a camp, we can have three messages. One message in the morning for one hour. Then after that, we close, we pray. We have lunch. After so that, afternoon message. We have afternoon message and then evening message. And then after that, siesta, we come, we eat, and we go. We will, I mean, how much will we have? How many notes do you have now? Do you have a lot of notes? Yes. Huh? <laughs> yes. Amen. More comes. Hallelujah. So you are, the harder you are, the more you can come. So me, I used to go for all night. I used to pray. And then when I come back, then I continue learning. That's where I learned how to drink coffee. But I didn't used to drink coffee before. I used to drink so much coffee that coffee became my food. Oh yeah, if my beloved didn't make any stew for me, I just have coffee and then biscuits. And I'll be just even the coffee, when I drink one, I'm okay. And I'll be dead, coffee every time. My room is smelling of coffee and I'll be dead, just staying awake. Learning, medical school, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pharmacology, 
I mean, many things, microbiology, parasitology. We are learning, and then stress, tension. People are not, they are going to exam, you pass, you fail. Hey, you, you fail, you pass, you fail. This is hardness. At the same time, you are doing a church. You say you are called, nobody approves of you. Bishop, this has rejected you. Reverend, this has rejected you. This pastor has ruled you out. All sides are closed. Only you and your God. And then the examiner to say that you are going to see in the exam. People have heard that I started a church. You say you are a priest. Instead of concentrating on your school, you will see. After church come, I will show you his name, man. When I prayed for him, Am Roberts came to his house the next week. <laughs> Number two, hardness in long prayers. Long prayers takes hardness. Maybe I said, I stay, can stay in my room and pray for eight hours continuously. It takes something. Hardness. If you are not hard, you can't accomplish much for God. The next one, hardness in fasting. Ah, that one is more. More hardness. Next one, hardness in fasting for long times. Next one is hardness in fasting without food. The next one, hardness in giving. It takes hardness to give at times. You have to close your mind to all things and just give. Amen. The next one, hardness in doing multiple jobs, multiple roles. Like maybe you are a wife, you are a shepherd, you are a, hus- uh, a wife, a shepherd, a mother, a cook, a cleaner, a friend, a sex department, and what else? Choir leader. And everything. All. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hardness in dealing with those you love. When you love somebody, you have to deal with a person with hardness. That's the reality. If you really care for the person, you have to be hard at times. Amen. The next one, hardness in correcting yourself. Sometimes you need to check yourself. And you have to be strict and hard on yourself. And tell yourself, this is wrong. Hardness in reading. Because you have to force yourself to read. The next one. How many do you have? Okay. Start another ten. Hard- Nine. Okay. Ten. Hardness. Hardness in watching. Hardness in long prayers. Hardness in fasting for long times. Hardness in fasting without food. Hardness in giving. That's five. Hardness in doing multiple jobs and roles. Like shepherd and uh, worker, pastor and this, whatever. Hardness in dealing with those you love. Hardness in correcting yourself. Hardness in reading. The next one, hardness in studying. It takes hardness to study. It's very hard sometimes to study. The next one, hardness in meditating. The next one, hardness in controlling yourself physically and so on. The next one, Hardness, and that's the last one. No, hardness in listening to tapes and videos. The next one, hardness in quiet time. How many do you have now? 14. And the 15th, the last one, is hardness in doing what 
in not doing what is easy and nice Okay, I will make it two different points. Hardness in not doing what is easy and nice. And finally, hardness to do what is hard and difficult. Amen. The last one. Hardness to do what is hard and difficult for you. Now, I want everybody to do an exercise here. What is hard and difficult for you as a shepherd? And what is nice and easy for you as a shepherd? Okay? Now, if you do what is hard and difficult, you will go forward in the ministry. That's what I've seen. Choose. Divide all the things you are doing into two. Nice and easy, hard and difficult. Do the hard and difficult ones. You will move forward in ministry. Amen. Divide everything that you have to do into two parts. What is easy and what is nice to you. You don't have any sweat. It's nice. You do it. You like it. What is difficult for you and hard? Divide the things. Do the one that is hard and difficult. Keep doing it. You see that you move forward. When we started having miracle services, I found it very difficult. The tension to come and pray for the sake and ask that somebody who says he is healed should come. If you will notice around, rarely do people ask for testimonies. Rarely. Yeah. People pray and minister and so on. But rarely do you have even whatever that they will pray for the sake and that somebody is actually healed. Come. Do you know that? It was not easy for me. I, at, at times, you can almost go mad out of the tension. I remember when I went, and God told me, and I learned this principle, that do the things that are hard for you. Just keep doing them. It will become easy. Now it is becoming much easier for me. Amen. And I flow in the power and the anointing more easily. Because I've been doing what is has been hard and difficult. I keep doing it. When I went to South Africa, I preached and I said, you know, I'm going to do it. I don't care what happens to me. I prayed for the sick. I said, you are healed. Come. Come and see them. Plenty. They said they were healed physically when they were standing there. I mean, I was surprised. This one said this happened. This one said this happened. This one said, I said, oh, praise the Lord. Just do it. Just do it. I was standing on the car park. A lady came to me. I said, what is it? What is it? What do you want? She said, oh. She was holding her child. She came and said, yesterday you prayed for my child. My child was supposed to have an operation. She gave me the date. Next month or so. The, the testes, the balls, were not there. They, ha- they were not there. They were inside. So they were, so they were going to have an operation to move them. When I, she said, you had prayed. When she went to me, then she checked. They had come. Hey! When you do, it takes hardness to do what is hard and difficult for you. If it is Quiet time, that is hard for you. That is what you have to do from now. Just do you see how you'll be a different person. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It will change you. If it is reading, that is difficult for you. Just do it. If it is reading of English language, Vivian, are you okay? Sure. Really? You're just meditating. A spirit came to you. Okay. Listen. I'm telling you something. I'm sharing something I've never shared before. Amen. If it is hard and difficult for you, that is the divide the things you have to do in this life, ministry wise, into two. Put the easy ones here, put the difficult ones here. Do the difficult ones, leave the easy ones. Or emphasize on the easy, difficult ones. You see that you start to gallop. You start to gallop. I say you start to gallop. Okay, everybody take a paper, write the things that are easy on one side, and the things that are difficult on one side. We are going to divide it into two. For you personally, what does it mean to you? We have gone through a lot of things. Is that it, also reading, studying, praying, preaching, visiting, counseling, 
interaction. What is difficult? What is it that you don't like doing? You get it? Put those ones on the right. And put the ones that you like doing, and they are not a problem for you, put the other ones on the left. Amen. Amen, the man. Amen, Amen the ladies. Amen. Divide your life into two segments now. I'm talking as a shepherd, as a minister, as a pastor. Put the easy ones on the left and the hard things on the right. Okay? You must have at least five or ten things on one side and five or ten things on the other side. No, Cynthia, make a line. Divide into two. Hard on, this, on one side, easy on one side. Uh -huh. Pastor T, are you writing the hard and difficult on the one side? Prayer. It is, is, it, is it difficult to pray? You get it? Then you should move to the right. Okay. Fasting. Is it difficult? Move it to the right. <laughs> is it visitation. Is it easy or difficult? Move it to the If it's easy, if it's easy, move it to the right. If it's difficult, uh, no. If it's difficult, to the right. If it's easy, to the left. Interaction. Deep sea fishing. You are a shepherd. Is deep sea fishing some way to you. If it's difficult, move it to the right, please. If it's easy, keep it to the left. Okay? Now, preaching. Is it difficult to preach? Do you feel tense when you preach? Sit somewhere. Do you feel uh, trembling, running stomach? This, when you have to come and share. Is it some way to you? Put it on the right, please. That is one of the difficult things for you. Something is happening here. God is going to take you forward like a bullet. I said you are going to move forward like a bullet. Prayer. Reading. What about reading? Reading. Reading. Is this something that you, if you've not been doing it at all, then it's something that is hard for you. So please move it to the right side. Study. Now study. Is this some way and difficult? Now study to the right. Study of the Bible. Have you been doing it and getting personal revelation or you just listening to tape? Listening to tape, is it easy for you on the left? Is it difficult for you? Something you don't do much on the right. Alex, are you not writing? You can't write. Oh, God will bless you for all your hard work. If something is easy but you don't find time to do it, then it is difficult. <laughs> that is the whole thing. The difficulty is in finding time to do the thing and being able to do it. Amen. Amen. Prissy Mary, have you got everything? All the things. How many things on your left? And on the right? Seven easy things and seven hard things. Okay? Okay? So, the law. Okay, wait. The law of progress for a shepherd eh, is that if you do what is hard and difficult rather than what is nice and easy, you will progress very rapidly. Please write down that law. If you do what is hard and difficult rather than what is nice and easy, you will progress very rapidly. Rapidly, very, very, very rapidly. You progress very, very rapidly in life. Amen. Uh, Alex, please get a sheet of paper and put your own uh, notes. For this hard and difficult, nice and easy. Give him a pen. Uh -huh. So put your hard and difficult in there. Nice and easy. Have you finished? Prayer, visitation, counseling, interaction. Fasting all night. Uh, what? Giving, giving. First and best. Is it easy or is it difficult? Offerings, pledges. You can do the same thing for marriage. What are the difficult things in marriage for you? Do them more. Come on now, you're talking to me, sister. Glory to God. I feel the anointing flowing. 
<laughs> Pastor Eddie, this is the law of pro- rapid progress for a shepherd. The law of rapid progress for a shepherd and a pastor. Find the things that are difficult. Do them. Leave the easy ones. Are you there or you've gone home? Has my right, left or right? <laughs> Having sex. I tell you, best and best. First and best, is it on the left or right? Is it on the... How many have it on the easy side, first and best? How many have it on the hard side? Oh, be honest, please. It's hard for some people. Good. All right, on the stage. Hard. Okay. Good. What are the... These are the easy things for you. Difficult things. Difficult things. Difficult to pray. Difficult prayer. As much as I want. As much as you want to. Good. Difficult to fast. Difficult to fast. Okay. Difficult to get up early. To get up early. Yeah. It's difficult to study. Study. And to read. To get up early. Is it difficult for you? Huh? Yes. It's not difficult for you. So sure. Then means you are supposed to get up even earlier. Yes. It's difficult to be punctual. Punctual. And, uh, punctuality. It's punctuality. Being at meetings on time. Shepherds, you come from shepherd meeting. meeting. Eight o'clock. They've closed. You've now come to pose. It's difficult to win a soul. That is to uh, actually establish a person. Clap for him. So, the law of rapid progress for you. What are the things you must now begin to do wildly? I'm beginning to pray wildly, to fast, to get up early. But actually, Alex Daniel is getting a wild alarm call. So he's coming with us. That's the law. Wildly to To study, to read, to be punctual, make uh, very conscious of what uh, can be punctual. And then to uh, make sure I want. Good. Mr. Samsoya. Clap for Luis. Clap for Luis. What are your easy, your hard things? Give us your hard things. Hard things, quiet time. Quiet time. Yeah, that's one of the How many have got quiet time as one of your hard things? Hard things, good. I'm glad, you see, he's a pastor. He's not perfect, he's honest. You see, he's not perfect, he's only honest. So the first difficult thing for him is a quiet time. Very important. Number two. Um, visiting people. Visiting people. Hmm. Good. Uh, yes, go ahead. Um, leading worship is a very hard thing for me. Leading worship. Yes. So that's the thing you must pop. Me too. Leading worship was very difficult for me. But how many have noticed I can lead worship now? Ah, if you don't say I know. <laughs> I can lead worship. I can take the service from the beginning. How many have seen me doing it before? From the beginning of the service, I take and I lead the worship through right up to the time for the choir to sing and I go and sit down. Oh, bruh. Hello, me, man. It was very difficult for me. Worship. So I'll just be doing that, struggling, and it makes you become good at it. Amen. Hard things. Um, it's easy for me to reach. Ah, hard things, please. Steady, sorry. Steady, okay. Okay. Next one. Long prayer. Yes. Next one. Leading praise. Leading praise. Sex. Sex. It's hard for you. Yes. Hey. <laughs> See me at I lay hands on you. I lay hands on you. I lay hands on you and you just uh, receive an anointing. Take it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Follow up. Okay, what are the easy things for you? Easy, easy. Easy for him to interact. Yes. I 
it's easy for me to listen to tapes. Listen to tapes is easy for him. Uh, it's easy for me to lead prayer. Lead prayer is easy. Reading my Bibles. Reading your Bibles is easy. Okay. Normal prayer. Two hours. Easy to pray for two hours every day. Good. Pray for God. Um, fasting is very easy for me. Fasting is very easy for you. Wow. Hey, Charlie. I'll fast the whole week. Ah. Hey. Why your wife doesn't cook in the house? Right? <laughs> she cooks every time, but she complains. She cooks every time. She, she complains that you are not eating her food. Yeah. Wow. Forget. You forget to eat. Then you can be saving a lot of money to build a house, huh? Oh? <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, easy and nice. Uh, seven, counseling. Counseling is easy and nice. Finish. First and best is easy. First and best is easy. Offering is easy. Offering is easy. Witnessing is very easy. Witnessing. Good. Inviting people to church. Inviting is easy. Good. Clap for him. You are a good man. Bless you. Go sit down. Pastor Kakra, come. What is easy for the prophet? Tell us. <laughs> Speak out now. What are the easy things for you? Reading is generally easy. Reading. He he reads. He stolen a lot of my books. Amen. <laughs> Good? Prayer is easy. You can pray for how long? Oh, well, on the average, about six hours. Six hours a day. <laughs> That's why you are a prophet. <laughs> it's easy for him to pray six hours a day. Wow. Prophet must interact with the Lord and bring the word of the Lord. Yeah. You see, everybody is different. Yes. Have you seen? Everybody is different. Everybody has his difficult things and his easy things. When you start to emphasize on the difficult, you see how it's moving forward. Next one is what? Preaching is easy for me. Preaching is easy for you. Teaching is easy for you. Sleeping is easy. Sleeping is easy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, eating is easy for me. Eating? Okay. Is it difficult for anybody to eat? <laughs> difficult for you to eat? Hey. Okay. That's the easy. What are the hard things for you? Visitation. Listen, please. Visiting people is difficult for me. Visiting people is difficult for you. Good. You see, he's a pastor. And he's saying what is difficult for him as a pastor. Okay? Uh, waking up very early is difficult. Waking up very Is it not because you sleep late? Yes. So, if you really want to wake up early, you have to sleep early. But I don't think you can wake up early in life. <laughs> you, your work is late. Okay? Uh, conducting a miracle service is difficult. Conducting a miracle service is difficult for you. Okay? Interacting with people is also difficult for me. Interacting with people is difficult for me. But it was easy for this one. You see, so he is a pastor, but finds it difficult to interact with people and finds it difficult to visit people. You get what I'm saying? These are very important for a pastor. But the reason why is because he's more of a prophet, prophet than a pastor. Oh, yeah. More of a prophetic anointing that is operating on him. Than even a pastoral anointing. Amen. The calling. Uh, inviting people to church is also difficult for me. Inviting people to church. See, it should be easy for a pastor. More of a prophet. So if you want the pastoral one to work, you have to emphasize. Next one. Like funerals and Going for funerals, engagements, outdooring is yeah. difficult for you. Very difficult. You have to force yourself to do such things. 
Good. What about sharing comes? Um, it's not. Is it under the miraculous miracle service? Um, no. I wouldn't say Prophetic it. all nights. Well, I, I don't do it. It's difficult for me. It's only difficult. So write it under the difficult so that you do it. Clap for the prophet. Are you learning something here? Are you learning something here? Yes. Everybody is different. And we all have things that we do naturally and easy. More easily. So the things that are difficult for you, take them and then just run with them. Mr. Safari, come. Easy. Preaching and teaching. Easy. Preaching and teaching. Preaching and teaching. Okay. Praying. Pray. Fasting. Fasting. Visiting. Visiting. First and best. First and best. Offering. Offering. Reading Bible. Reading Bible. Sleeping. Sleeping. Eating. Eating. For the meantime. For the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> no sex. I'm not married. <laughs> okay. Um, hardest. Hard. Hard. Hardest. Hard things that I find to do. Things that I find to hard to do. Mm -hmm. Leading praise and worship. Leading praise. Why? <laughs> um, I was discouraged. My father discouraged me that my voice was in <laughs> I have not come to Pastor me. Johnny, is there anything like a voice that is not good? Every voice has its own touch. Some people are what? Tone dead. Death. They can't catch keys. Somebody like who? Yes, Kim. Kim was sacked from the choir when he started. Give him the mic. Yes. You can work on it. Get to, but everybody can do it up to a point. Leading worship. Everybody can do it. And I, I mean, I used to have a certain brother called Frankie. I used to call him anytime I preach. I'll tell him, be ready. What I that you also have to sing. Yeah. But I couldn't, I was helpless. When it comes to singing, I was totally helpless. But now I'm not helpless. I have my own song that I can bring and teach and flow with. Amen. Ha. Second. Interacting with people for a long time. Why? Short time is okay. Yeah, I I want to move on. You want to move on after hello and hi. <laughs> wow. Okay, next one is what? Um, don't broadcast. Uh, you find it difficult. Yeah. Okay. Even though I can preach, but uh, it comes to don't broadcast. Then inviting people to church, because I, I'm not able to interact for a long time. Yeah. Inviting people to church, it's like, some way I feel like, but the way I want to do it is not the way I want to do it. And then social gathering, uh, some way. <laughs> what are social gatherings? Funerals, uh, outdoors, weddings, and things. I only force myself before I before you can go. Okay, Reverend Saki, would you tell us? If you tell, if you tell us, tell us. Then we will call you. By you tell us. I didn't ask you. Hard and soft. All right. Crap for the evangelists. Easy for him. Deep sea fishing. Very easy for me too. I like deep sea fishing. I can do it easily when I stand there and I'm catching the fish. Straight. 
Reading. Reading. Good. Listening to tapes. Listening to tapes. Easy. Have you got all those things on your list? Okay, next one. Preaching at crusades. Preaching at crusades. Easy. Assisting. Assisting. Wow. Easy. It's true. The hard ones. Hard. Preaching in church. <laughs> <laughs> Please, they send you a line. I think I can ask you that he knows. And we should be also know. Oh. <laughs> God knows my heart. Anyway. Um, sleeping is difficult. Yeah, he can't sleep. He, he doesn't sleep. He just be away. So if you want to wake up in the night and your alarm clock is not working, just ring him. He'll call you at any time of the night. Oh yeah, you can't sleep at all. Also, <laughs> remaining happy for a long time. Remaining happy for a long time. <laughs> Long fasting, difficult. Clap for the evangelist. <laughs> All right. Are you being blessed today? Yes. So, what is the law of rapid progress? Rather than oh, you don't give the whole law properly. If you do what is. You will progress rapidly. Amen. Because the nice and easy ones, you will do them naturally, even without thinking. You will just be doing them. So now move to the things that are difficult and start to do them. And you see how you begin to catapult and escalate in ministry. I've noticed it, it's true. And I started to do things that were hard, difficult. Started to move. Last law. The law, the effectiveness of a shepherd or leader. Depends on the level of disentanglement from the world. The effectiveness of a shepherd Wow! Are you tired? The effectiveness of a shepherd or leader depends on the level of disentanglement. How do you spell disentanglement? D I S E T E N T A N G L E. Disentangle yourself. Six things that you must disentangle yourself from. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one. First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians chapter seven. You have enough notes to go and teach a lot of things for a long time. First Corinthians chapter seven. Six things you must disentangle yourself from. Number one, beloveds. Beloved doses. See, sometimes we say this, sometimes we say that, sometimes we say you should get beloved. Another time we tell you that it's entangle yourself. All that too. Depends on, you know, the whole angle of the thing. Who you are, when the thing is applied. Amen. Isaac, stand up, please. Isaac, please stand up. 
Verse 28. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. Verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remains that both they that have wives be as though they had none. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passeth away. Amen. Amen. Number one, beloved. Number two, marriage. Husbands and wives. Number three, marriage, pregnancy, and children. Number one is beloved. Number two, marriage, into brackets, husbands and wives. They are the first entanglement. Number three, marriage again, pregnancies and children. It's another entanglement that comes. Number four, work. No, is it number five? Four, work. Number five, sin. And number seven, number six, worldly company. Worldly. Now, amen. We are ending this session, but listen. This is the last law of the shepherd. Are you learning about the laws of shepherds? Yes. The laws that concern you as a human being, as a shepherd. You have to disentangle yourself from things in the world if you want to please God. Amen. You have a beloved as though you don't have a beloved. Some of us are here as if we don't have children. But we have children at home who are going to school and who are in the house alone. Yes. If you are going to please God, Adama, it's as though you didn't have all these things. True. You have to disentangle yourself. Release yourself. No man that word entangled himself with the affairs of his life, that he may please him who has called him to be a soul. Otherwise, when you are going out to a man, what about if you die? What about if you die? When they say, charge! Forward! How do they say it? Charge. Do they say charge? Or these days, you don't charge. Advance. All troops advance. Then you advance. If I go to kill me, and my wife, my child, my this, my that. Yeah. How do you advance? Charlie, I can't go anywhere. Me, if I was a soldier, I couldn't. I, I, they say advance. I say, Charlie, if you want to advance, go. I'm not going to go anywhere. You just get up and you sit in your office and you say advance. What do you mean? Huh? It's a manifestation of disloyalty, disobedience. <laughs> but that is why some people are not good Christians. Because of marriage, their husbands, their wives, their beloveds, their work, sin, work, bad worldly company. But when you move with the world, worldly people, they are so somewhere about church. They don't go to church at all. So you, when you are going, it's like you are wasting your time. It's like what extra thing have you got in your life? I mean, we, we don't have all these. Yeah. When they are resting and enjoying at home, relaxing, you are Sunday, you are in church. And now you say you are a shepherd and pastor. So what is your best working day? Sunday, when they are resting. They say, I'm to be rest. Everybody who has a common sense is resting. You say you are a pastor, you are moving around, visiting people, ungrateful people in their houses. 
<laughs> and then Monday morning, you are going to work. Damn! I mean, what at all are you up to? If you are close to wealthy people, you will always feel confused when you are doing the work of the ministry. So disentangle yourself. If you are in school, your best mate should not be someone who is in the world. Amen. Amen. Your roommates should be a believer. Okay? When you learn, it should be a believer, probably your church or somebody who is close. At your workplace, try to get another lighthouse person to be working in the same, make connection for them to also come. Another shepherd, so that after this thing you all move. Amen. It helps. But as you move with unbelievers, you will feel. Pastor Patrick, where is he? I sat to you recently. Come. <laughs> One day he came and he gave, he said something to the church. Um, you said you went out, you, you came from Tamale, you met some other friends who were pharmacists also. You are pharmacists. And then how did you feel? Do you remember? Um, it was, I think, two years ago, I was in Tamale and I was going to Accra. And I passed through Kumasi. But when I got there, I went to my um, course mate. He was a pharmacist in Kumasi, and he's doing very well. And when I got there, he had a problem. He was going to buy a new car. Should listen, he... listen. You are a pharmacist, you are living in Tamale mm-hmm. instead of Accra. Why are you in Tamale? Um, well, God wants you to be there. By, yeah, by Good. choice. By choice, okay. When you came to Kumasi, you met your Kumasi. Classic. He was also a pharmacist in Kumasi. Okay. And he was my roommate at school. We were very good friends. And when I got there, he had a problem. He wanted to buy a new car. Should he buy a Land Cruiser Prado or the ordinary Land Cruiser? And, and, and it was... No, do you see the problem he had? It was... <laughs> <laughs> so we discussed it for a while and he said, well, he'll do something about it. He was very rich at that time. He wanted to buy, his problem was, should I buy Land Cruiser Prado or the short version? Or Land Cruiser. That's his main problem. <laughs> so I left him and I went to Accra and I met my, my brother's wife, who's also a pharmacist. And she so you, the first one you made, you thought of how you could also be? No, I didn't, I didn't think then. You didn't think then? No, I just left him. We did but you are also it. struggling in Tamale with your old pair. Yes. <laughs> okay. yeah. So I, I, met, I came to Accra and I met my sister-in-law who is also a pharmacist at Kolebu. And she's established a Kolebu pharmacy there. And she's become very well known and she was talk, telling me how far she has come and people come to see her and how well she's doing. And um, then I met my classmate, another one. He's also now importing and exporting, supplying USA. And they all seem to be doing very, very well. And as I, I talked to them, and I went home that evening, I had a very clear voice. Patrick, you're a fool. That <laughs> 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 here are your, your, your contemporaries, three of them. And my cousin, who's also a pharmacist, had just bought a brand new, um, a new car. And here were three pharmacists, four pharmacists, all classmates, and four are doing very well, and I was doing well too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the, I, had a very, I had a very clear word that evening, that Patrick, a very big fool. Look at your contemporaries. Look how well they're doing. You're in Tamale struggling. And as I sat there, that was a Tuesday evening, and I said, no, I got up. And I went to church. It was a Tuesday evening, so I just came to church. And, and when I entered, the, it was the cathedral, that was two years ago, I entered the place, I went past college, and I got into the, the cathedral. And when I got there, and I saw the people there, I saw Reverend Saki, I saw the bishop, I said, no, I did right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I made a good choice. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Now, if all your friends are buying Land Cruiser Prados and all the people that you are moving with are at a certain worldly level, 
You look foolish. And he said he had a clear voice that day that you are a fool. Yeah. So it becomes difficult to go on wildly in the ministry because you have to that you are a fool. Because he's, he's a pharmacist. And he's not just a pharmacist, he's finished pharmacist. He's got a master's degree, isn't it? Qualified to, to teach. His wife is PhD, Dr. PhD. She could be working for whatever, but God has spoken to them to be in Tamale. What is in Tamale? They were in Norway, and then they go from Norway, ooh, they passed over Accra and went to Tamale. Two guns. <laughs> Do you think if you are always interacting with such people, you will feel free to give yourself more and more and more and more and more and more to the ministry? That will be difficult. As you disentangle yourself, if you feel freer to kill, kill yourself for the Lord, if that's what you mean. When I became full time, the person I was seeing was Reverend Saki, Pastor Eddie. He was also, one day we sat in the office, he was, I was sitting there, he was sitting there, and I looked at him, it was in the afternoon. We were sitting there. At that time, the church was now developing. Nobody comes for counseling. So we were sitting in the office alone. <laughs> we had made a stable. My father had stables. He used to keep his horse. Top hand, wild warrior, panorama, uh, Onoport, and uh, Selavi. They were all there. We had converted it into church office stables. We were having new believers school in the stable. We put a light there. And we have the believers. See, you remember? Yeah. I sat at the office. Yeah, I'm Dr. BC. I sat down. And yes, Reverend Saki, lawyer. And then I said to him, What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> It's real. Yeah. It's real. It's real. What are we doing here? But today we are here. We are still moving on. Yeah. And one day when we get to heaven, you see. It was worth it. I like what somebody said. One man of God said about Archbishop. That he was very pleased with the Archbishop. And he was calling him for various reasons. I was very busy. He's done well. Very well. I want that to be said about me one day. Not only by a human being, but by the law. To be fair, they will come. Come for your things now. Your land goes up, rados that you didn't get. Come for them. Be riding on the streets of gold. Cars made out of diamonds. Sit in the car, just sit in the car, you just pray, pra, 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 pra. and the car navigates itself, moving on streets of gold. And I will see some people are way better. How are you? You are working it. You keep working it. Come. <laughs> I am to that brazo that I didn't have on earth. I'm now having it on in heaven. Lay up for yourself treasures in the heaven. Amen. 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 So the more you disentangle yourself from the world and the things in the world, the easier it is for you to go out there and do. Beloved, it's good to have a bladder. At times it's also not good to have a bladder. Or sometimes when you have a bladder, you don't have a bladder. Marry your mind as if you are not married. You are so much involved in the work. Your work, it's true that you work. Look at the other people here. As if they don't have jobs. Look at them as if they don't have jobs. Like they are all workers. Workers. But I don't please, what work do you do? I'm a public health. I'm a public health physician and the head of the department of Community Health, School of Medical Sciences. Kwame Mkwa University of Science and Technology. Head of department of what? Community Health Department Head, University of Ghana, the University of Science and Technology <laughs> Medical School. Head of the country, SMS. He's here. As if he's jobless. Where do you work? Military Academy and Training Schools. As what? 
my teacher in military academy, and I'm an officer commanding the school of education. Where do you went? Mana Mission Hospital. Wow. What do you do there? I'm a theater supervisor. Theater supervisor. What is a theater supervisor? What do you do as a theater supervisor? Amen. Amen. I'm just making a point. I'm making a point. It's not that we don't have work. It's how to disentangle yourself and just be moving on. Work on. Go to school. That's a seventh disentanglement. School. Right? And those of you who are students, school.
Socialization. Amen. Amen. All right. Are you happy about socialization? Yes. yes. Good. So we are going to pray now. Um, you can move out if you want, but we are not praying for a very long time. We are praying for 30 minutes. Amen. Only 30 minutes. Okay. Our time is almost away. So no talking. Yesterday I said it very emphatically. Do not chat or talk or laugh. I am the only person allowed to talk in the church. Amen. Amen. Okay? okay? So do not talk or chat or laugh. We are praying for more growth of the church and of ourselves personally because who we are is more important than what we are saying or doing. Amen. We are praying for more branches of Lighthouse more pastors. Therefore, most of you must become pastors soon. Amen. Amen. We are praying for more loyalty. We have talked about laws of loyalty. Amen. You must be loyal to what you say, etc. Today, we are talking about manifestations of disloyalty. And we want to have more loyalty and more of the power of God as well in the church. Let us pray. How you can be led by the Spirit of God. Because these are days and times when everybody says he has heard the voice of God and we need to be sure whether we are really hearing the voice of God or the voice of a man or our flesh. Amen. Why are you standing outside? Please, there must be nobody behind those doors whom I cannot see, unless you are maybe a mother with a child. Apart from that, you must be inside. Very important. Do not let me speak about this in the evening. Amen. Just follow instructions. Um, tonight, we will be taking an offering. Amen. 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 So bring money when you are coming. Okay? So that we take an offering because there are expenses to be catered for. We are having a visitor. It's expensive to invite a big man of God to come over. Amen. Amen. So we are taking an offering. We we'll have one session. Uh, share the word. We'll be closing very soon because we'll break before we come around 7.30 for the next session. Amen. And um, it's very, very important to come here. Now, uh, concerning our Bible school, I believe that uh, I'm speaking on behalf of our principal, Mrs. Wilson, Lady Pastor Dr. Wilson, who is the principal of the seminary now. Uh, 
we want to have more people, amen, for the next uh, semester. So I believe that every church is going to, um, what do you call it, send some people, amen, for education, for ministry, amen. amen. And some of you here realize that you need to attend the seminar. Is that not so? Yes. How many are going to attend? Raise your right hand, let me see. Want to attend the seminar? Not the Bible school, the full time seminar. Let me see your right hand, okay? All right. Very good. Immediately after service, Mrs. Wilson, where are you? Yes. Just come right to her. She will be standing on this side here, and they're going to sort out. Now, those who, uh, we have only a limited number of spaces for full scholarship. And we are opening the school to the general public from next semester. Okay? So that means that the school scholarship means food and lodging. And, uh, yeah, and tuition and everything. Uh, in the in except registration. And uh, there are only a certain number of people that will be given scholarship. So it will be first come, first serve, and recommendation by your pastors. Amen. Amen. And then it was open to the general public also. That means we're going to advertise in the newspapers and other places. So other people from other churches would also come there. We get it. So we can only cater for a certain number. We would like to cater for our own people first. Amen. Amen. See somebody like uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he realized that his school, he uh, catered for a lot of people. A lot of people came there, went to the school free of charge. And many, many, many churches and groups have come out of that Bible school up to today. In Ghana, I can just mention two big churches where the Pastors were trained from there. One action, Bishop Dantawina is the fruit of Archbishop Bible School, Bishop Ajinasari, Web Miracle Church, also a fruit of uh, uh, Archbishop School, Redemption Arms, also a fruit of uh, Archbishop School, and the Fountain of Life, uh, Solid Rock Chapel. Bishop Boutre, a uh, special faith church in Takrati. So it's a very good thing, and I think that we are blessed as a church to be invested in a line like that. Amen. Because I see that the products, you know, at the end of the day, you see that they become very, very great and mighty men of God, who people never thought would be great men of God. Amen. Are you excited about that? Yes. So if you want to be part of the seminary, uh, full time, come over for a meeting with Mrs. Wilson on this side of the hall after service. Okay, in fact, I think on this side. Now, all married women, they are, you are Mrs. and uh, you are married, all right? Um, and you were married in this church. We counseled you and you got married after church, please come on the stage. We want you to just give us some information, fill in some quick forms. Mrs. Uh, Lindsay will meet you up there to fill the forms quickly before you rush for your uh, dinner. <coughs> Are you going to eat? Pardon? Yes. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Are you excited? Yes. Now give me those manuals over there. Start. Bring me all the books. You are quickly Larry. Start and bring me some. The manuals. The manuals first. Manuals. All right. Quickly, what you have in your hand? Just bring it. Good. These manuals are for sale. How much are they? 15,000 for one. Wow. Very expensive. It's not. It's very cheap. Pastor Johnny, 
is the chief. Okay. The people who make it say it is very cheap. Alright? And those who are buying it say it is expensive. Alright. Have it? It's what is inside that gives it that price. Okay. Uh, it is information that if you're going to be a pastor, you need it. Get them, and it's done in a very quality way. Unless you don't like quality things. Pastor John, you need to do very lower quality things. Is that what you prepare? No. 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 Okay. It's, huh? All right. So very, very expensive. Pastor Brian. Where's Pastor Brian? Is it not expensive to make something like this? Each cover is laminated. Is that not so? And uh, paper, ink, labor, computer, books, many, plenty things. Amen. Expensive. 15,000. Practical things. All the things that we learn at camps and everything, and the teaching to be a pastor, a shepherd, etc., ready for you if you want to pass your exams. Because the pastors now have exams to write in order to get their diploma in pastoral ministry. All pastors are going to write exams and this is the textbook because what is happening now is we are doing something like what they do in universities. Even if you are, even if you are a pastor, you will have lectures and then you will have exams. So it's like you are doing the ongoing work, like in the army, they do the ongoing Work and then they do exams at the point. You get what I'm saying? And when they do exams, they qualify. And then also your practical work is like in the university, sometimes you have to do practicals for your thesis. So you have the exams, you have the practicals, you have the lectures, the credit hours, all that combined to become a degree. So very soon we'll be issuing degrees. Amen. Amen. Without this, you cannot pass at all. Take my word for it. I was trained in the medical school. Okay. <laughs> Without this, if I say you can't pass, you can't pass. <laughs> okay? It's very simple. So you can try your own way. And uh, recently we did a, a school of the word. We realized that uh, this on exam, some people feel that they know, others feel that it's very cheap. And you see big, big people were getting 30% and so on, and they were surprised. It is a school and we are raising the standards of education, of knowledge, of information, of reading, of studying, everything. There's a high standard. If you want to be in Lighthouse, you have to rise up and work hard and attain the standards. You can't tell us, drop all the standards. That's what they are doing in the, the education system in Ghana now. It's like uh, the Saito people and those who are in international schools and so on, let's make everybody the same by giving them all the same uniform and by uh, doing certain things. It doesn't, it's rather brings everybody down. That's communism. You go to Cuba, the same uniforms that they wear, they're all of them, that's the uniform that we are all wearing now, all schools. Is that also in Cuba? Yeah, same thing. And it's not bringing education, that education standard is falling, right? Listen to people who are in university, the language, yeah, they can't speak English. It's pathetic, pathetic. You see, so bringing everything down doesn't take anybody far. It rather, it rather brings us all down. Rather, we have to set it up high, and then those who are not making, we help you to attain to that standard. Amen. Amen. All right. How to be led? So please make sure you acquire uh, some of these books to be going abroad. So when they are finished, they are finished. And um, also another last announcement is: all pastors must make sure you pay your shepherd's camp fee. Shepherd's board, I am directly linked up with the shepherd's board and after the camp, any problems will eventually come to me. So please, I know why I'm saying, if you haven't paid, write an undertaking as a pastor that I am going to ensure that this and this and this will be paid. I sign it upon my integrity and my calling as a minister. And then it's sorted out. Amen. Amen. How to be led by the Spirit of God. Number one, know that there are several possible claims about the will of God. 
several possible claims, claims about the will of God. Know that each of these possibilities can be defended to be the will of God. Second point. Point number one. Know that there are several possible claims. <coughs> Many people claim things about the will of God. One thing. Several wills. Amen. Amen. And then know that each of these possibilities can be defended by, they can be defended as being the will of God. Amen. Number three, know what is your own will. Okay? I'm giving you a background of how to be led by the Spirit of God. Okay? Know what is your own will. Number two, number four. Know your own mind. You see, I've stopped numbering things now because the numbers are too big. Know your own mind. Number five. Know your own flesh. Okay? Know your own flesh. Write it this way. Know the voice of your mind. Instead of know your own mind, right? Know the voice of your own mind. Number two, or three, or four, or five. Know the voice of your own flesh. Okay? Because your flesh has a voice. Okay? Know what is your own will. Are you there or you've gone home? Then the last point is, know that there are many voices which are trying to lead you. Know that there are many voices which are trying to lead you in this life. There are many voices. Okay? Okay? Now let's give a list of voices. Voice number one. Your flesh. Number two. Your mind. Number three. The devil. Number four. Your friends. Number five. Your family. Number six. Your wife. Okay, start again. I'm giving you a list of voices. Okay? Number one is what? Number two? Mind number three? Devil number four? Friends number five? Family number six? A wife stroke husband? Number seven? Your best friends? Number eight, a very important circumstances. Circumstances. The circumstances of life often are what lead people. If there is a voice of the circumstance. Every circumstance has a voice. And it says something to you. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. And none of them is without signification. Have you found First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 10? Okay. Let's quote it together. First Corinthians 14, 10. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Again, there are, it may be. So many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Again, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. One more time. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification.
again. Again, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. First Corinthians 14, 10. Can you close your eyes and say, ready, go. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Again,
This is a real Christian brother. My brother, I used to stand with him and read with him many years. He started, he turned up the light and began to sing. Lead kindly light. Lead kindly light. They said, I can see them. They are leading, following. He was in the car. And this, my brother was in the car alone. Then my motor went. And the man told him that we are occult wizards and we are taking you to a cemetery tonight. This is a real, this is not an element. It's a motorway from airport. The person went to check at action. From action, he was going, we went to motorway and he was going home in Tema. He lived in Tema. Peace told him, no peace for this guy. But he went into the car. The guy took him to a cemetery. They went off the motorway and they went into a cemetery. And when they got, they said, come down from the car now. And they marched him. He said he was taking him to his grandmother's grave or so. They took him there. And they were about to slaughter him. And they asked him whether he would join them. He said, he prayed his last hour, Father, and he'll marry. He said, he will join them. <laughs> yeah. Sure. They changed their mind. The next day. They put him back in the car and they brought him to Tema. When they got to Tema, he got up and the guy said, I've changed my mind. I won't follow, follow you again. But he almost, he was almost slaughtered, ritual murder. Left small. My very good friend he was telling me, how could he be? When peace blew the whistle, Charlie, stop. Stop right there. If it means you should go, don't go. If you don't feel right about it, just stop right there. That is the principal way. Can I take it? He has seen at least eight visions of Jesus Christ personally as a prophet. He said, after the eight visions, the Lord told him that the major way by which I'm now going to lead you from now, as is the way I lead all other Christians, is by the inward witness of that inner peace. All Christians, including you, can take it. That is a principal way by which God leads us. Peace, the empire. Tell us what say. Peace is the empire. Peace. Let peace rule you. Let, peace rule. Let it govern you. The next one. Learn the voice of the Holy Spirit to your mind. There are different things. Now, first story then, John 14, 26 says, and when the Spirit of God is come, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said unto you. So the Spirit of God has a way of bringing things to your mind, your remembrance. That is one way by which the Holy Ghost speaks. He speaks in three ways to everybody. I mean, he can speak in three ways to you. Listen carefully. These are different from peace. When we, we are now moving out, and this is where people make mistakes. First, he can speak to your mind. Then he can speak to your spirit. And thirdly, he can speak to you physically, to your physical body. So these are the three. So number one, let how to, the Spirit of God speaks to your mind. And I'm going to show you how to know when the Holy Ghost has spoken to your mind. Are you there or you go home? Yeah. Yeah. Have you found that scripture, John 14? Yeah. Is it correct? Yeah. Okay. Read, read it. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to where? To where? Your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Please, amplify. Can you amplify? What does it say? And he will cause you to the, to the from the beginning. So. 26. And, and he will cause you to recall, will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. All right, okay, that's different. Now, learn the voice of the Holy Spirit to your
your mind. I will show you how to know that one. Number two, or the next, the next way, how many ways do you have? How many methods do you have? Five. So number six, learn the voice. I'm going to give you specific sign of the voice of the Holy Ghost in your mind. The next one is, learn the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to your spirit. Okay? And then, three, learn the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to your physical being. All right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you will... What is the difference between when the Holy Spirit speaks to your mind? William, are you there? And when the Holy Ghost speaks to your spirit? And number three, when the Holy Ghost speaks to you physically? To your physical being, your physical body? What is the difference? When he speaks to your mind, you have certain thoughts. Distinctive thoughts. Now, that distinctive thought, a special unique thought, it comes in a way that is unusual. And that thought, you, can, you have to learn it by experience. As you are thinking, 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 you will begin to realize that certain thoughts are unusual and must be from the Holy Ghost. And again, it will not contradict the word of God. One day, I was, I always use this example. I had a pastor who told me six lies. Six or so different lies. I was lying in a bed in Switzerland, in a hostel, and I was lying on the bed like this. And then I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit telling me, Pastor so and so is a liar. And I am going to show you five lies that he has told you. And immediately I sat up like this. Clear. Then it came, it came so fast that I couldn't even remember. So when I stood there, I said that five, I did not remember the five different lines. He told me one, this, two, when he was joining the church, this one he said it was not true. This was not true. This was not true. This was not true. This was not five. And I just got out of the bed like that. There are times that God has told me they come straight to my mind. But with experience, I know. How do I know the voice of my wife? When she says hello, when she says hello, when she's sad, I know that hello. When she says hello, when she's angry, I know hello. When she says hello, when she's happy, I know. When she says hello on the phone, I know. When she says hello on mobile, even mobile, and this thing, I know the difference. By hearing her voice many times. So I was like, how can I know? You will begin to know the difference between that thought and devil thoughts. And there are devil thoughts. Hmm. There are many voices in None of them is that they are all important voices. So certain thoughts come to your mind. Somebody say, ah, how do I know whether the Holy Ghost? It's also by experience and by faith. Because I know. God told me once when this person is a thief. I know that what he told me is true. <laughs> yeah, not you. I mean, some <laughs> thought. Amen. Amen. So learn it. But that is not the principal way that God will speak to you. It is one of the ways.